Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Happy Friday. I hope that you have had the most amazing week. If this is your first time tuning in with Conversations with Toy, I want to give you the most extensive warm welcome and thank you for tuning in. I personally do not think that things just happen, you know, just for play. So if you are here, that is because you are meant to be here. There's something here for you and I'm glad that you are here. I am Toy the Podcaster. I am also a content creator, blogger, freelance writer. What else do I do? I am a wife and a mom. I have quite a few hats, quite a few responsibilities. But one thing that doesn't differ from me, even if you have kids or not, is the fact that, yes, I deal with mental health. And with that, this is why we talk about mental health on every podcast. Although we do talk about what is happening on these internet streets. I am grateful, 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 grateful for you to be here. There is quite a lot to talk about and I want to get right into the episode. Um, I am slowly coming down off of Roots Picnic High. Yeah, Roots Picnic High. It was an amazing event. I'm going to talk about the highs, the lows, my thoughts, and you know, just everything that surrounded that. Then I went on a brand trip. So I'm literally having a week. It's been a great week of content creation. It's been a great week of media. It's just, it's been a lot. So let's talk about Roots. Roots Picnic was last Saturday and Sunday here in the Philadelphia city. It is one of the most well-known picnics festivals. It's not really a picnic. So Roots Picnic is the name, but it is a music festival. It is very diverse in the fact that There are R&B artists, there's rap artists, um, neo soul, it just has a little bit of everything, gospel. I really do enjoy the music that the city brings when it brings the Roots Festival together. I'm going to start with the cons of things that I didn't like. And right off the bat, right off the bat, if you were there Saturday and or Sunday, you know how difficult it was to get into the actual Roots Festival. Now, here's the reason why. I don't even know that reason. I don't know what was happening on the other end, but I do know from my perspective coming in, um, Saturday I came in quite late-ish, but not really. Um, I probably showed up on the festival grounds about a little after two because I had gotten invited to uh, Quest Love's cheesesteak um, pop-up and we had to be there by a certain time. And so I didn't want to get there too, too early because again, it started at one, so getting there about two thirty gave me enough time to get in, go through security, um, scan my tickets, get a certain specific wrist wristband for that event, and then get to the event. So again, we are parents; we need to secure our kids. We still have kids that have places to be on Saturdays, like you know, we have basketball, we have so many things that are going on. So we spent more time making sure that they were okay. I packed my bag very strategically. They have a list every year of the things you can bring and the things you cannot bring. I, you know, one of my other cons has to do with the people themselves. And what do I mean by the people? I don't mean Roots people. I don't mean the staff of Roots. I mean the actual, you know, festival goers. I saw so many people with book bags when they clearly, as clear as day, said you could not have book bags. I saw people knowing that they had signs saying no liquids unless it's, you know, factory seal, blah, blah, blah. And people still, still didn't listen. I'm just literally at a state of confusion as to why you would want to start your concert going experience by having to either go all the way back to your vehicle to take your book back back or having to waste a a drink that you brought in that that those were just a couple of questions that I saw so you know the struggle to get into the facility but then having to deal with the people who again don't adhere to rules I get it you know there's some people who just like to be rebellious which means they rather start it up they don't care they rather just be you know combative argue and all those other things but why argue with people who can you know deny your entrance right 
And what if you took an Uber and your car wasn't there, so you can't even go back? These were the some of the things that I observed. So my biggest issue with Bruce Picnic had to do with the getting into the facility. And not even based on security, but based upon them not opening the doors at the times that they were going to open it. So again, day one, I honestly could see, you know, some pushback, some things that needed to be corrected last minute. I understand that wholeheartedly. But by day two, I felt like that should have been rectified. There should have been some better um, things put into place so that this was not an issue. But unfortunately, it was not. Now, my husband and I decided the first day that we took an Uber there and back, that made sense. Day number two, uh, we decided to drive. And so we got to the area and we parked pretty much right there dead on where the, you know, the festival was. So we got there early. I think we got there about a good 12, 15, 12, 20. We sat in our car till about a good 12, 45. And then about 12, 50, we started to walk towards the front. We didn't get in to almost 1, 50, 2 o'clock. And I'm honestly believing it was like more like 1, 55, 2 o'clock. And we were in line and the line was already long. And so then you have the people who decide to cut the sides and cut over so they need to have some type of fence that stops that because you have people that are adding to the line that we're already you know tirelessly waiting in because then they wanted to cut and there, no but no staff not one person stopped them and so those i think were the the biggest things one the facilities could have done better with getting everybody in and it wasn't just even getting in like initially like waiting for them to open the doors and then they finally did and we started going in but i found out later on that even through the process even later on as people came in like three four o'clock the line to get in was still long to the point where there were people who were unfortunately getting sick and by getting sick i mean passing out now here's why the particular part of passing out may not necessarily be roots picnic salt although again i will stress you could have done better with the getting in the reason why I don't think that's their fault is because we don't know what the person or persons had going on. It is an extremely hot um, situation to be outside at any outdoor festival, music festival, jazz festival, food festival. It doesn't matter. When you're outside and you're in this open space, that heat dropping on you can be extremely intense in a very short amount of time. If you were in, in the, the passing out that I heard happened on Sunday, from a reliable source because I gave her a set of my other set of tickets. I had two, I bought four, about four tickets and I gave one of my, um, another concert creator my ticket. So I know that this is the actual legitimate um, issue that took place. Here is the thing. It doesn't matter what festival you go to, but because when we're out at or outdoor festivals, indoor festival, whatever, when we're at festivals, especially when you're outside, you got that summer vibe going and you're outside, you're roaming around and now you have a couple of cocktails. Maybe you did a little bit of a pregame because that's what I did. I pregamed before I came in. I had drinks and cocktails once I got there. Um, and I even had a cocktail on my, on when I got home on Sunday. Here is the problem. If on Saturday you had been drinking all day and you didn't enforce any type of water, didn't hydrate yourself, didn't try to attempt to detox, didn't do any of those things, I can see why you would then be easily to pass out because you got all kinds of stuff going on. And let me just say, I went to Penn State so we can hold our liquor, but the issue is, is that that doesn't stop heat from being a problem. So if you were already doing that Saturday and then you came in on Sunday and you're at the festival, it's now hot, you're waiting to get in, it could can, it can just be easily be a thing. The second thing is this, with the whole drinking process of this, is that you got to learn how to pace yourself, no matter where you are, no matter what festival that you're dealing with. And whether it's a festival or some type of outdoor activity, you really legitimately have to find a way to balance your drinking. At no time during Saturday or Sunday, and I do mean at no time was my husband or myself drunk at any given time. The reason why is that I have been getting to the point where Again, getting drunk is, you know, whatever if you choose to do that. But my thing is that I want to be able to enjoy and be aware and have my senses about me because you just never know. I do want to say that I want to give the utmost respect to Roots Picnic because they definitely made sure that we were safe. I did not feel at ease and that's really rare because I don't like big crowds. Now, I'm not saying that my anxiety didn't show up because when you're outside at these festivals, there's so many people, I'm always looking like, what's the escape route? Where can I go? This could be because I went to an outdoor function here in Philadelphia at one time a couple of years ago and there was actual live shooting right where I was at. I'm hiding underneath a police car as if that police car was supposed to somehow save me from bullets because you know they just are gonna avoid me. 
you know, sarcastic. And ever since then, like, I've always just been on guard about being in public places. So what are the things that you would need for going to any form of outdoor function? I'm going to put the link in bio so you could shop my Amazon list because honestly, you know, I wanted to make sure you had everything you could possibly think of from battery packs to tissues to all the things it is there. So check my uh, link in bio so that you can get your hands on some good prominent concert gear that you may need. Because again, I must stress enough, you want to be prepared and it's better to be over prepared, but logical than to be under prepared. So let's swing over to LBI, which is Long Beach Island in New Jersey. It's about an hour and a half away from Philadelphia. I highly, 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 highly suggest that you travel and go. The beaches are amazing. There's a lot of, if you like the beach town um, type of situation, but this is a little bit more quieter to a certain extent. And I find that if you're a foodie, you're going to find some of fantastic foods um, to eat there and just kind of get the whole vibe. And especially if you kind of want to go away from like the Wildwood crowd, which I know a few weeks ago, as soon as Wildwood opened, it was a lot of riffraff going on. I would highly suggest you to swing over to LBI. And the best time to go to LBI might be during the week because a lot of people who are there for a vacation are there more towards the weekend. During the week, it's just a little bit more quieter. Um, I went to a brand trip with Fearless Restaurants this week and experienced LBI, which I have done the last three to four years. And every time I just truly enjoy it, I look forward to it. It is just one of those times where I get a little bit of a staycation um, in a different city. And I love the fact that one, we're all gifted our own rooms. There is no sharing of rooms, which I appreciate because I'm a mom, I am a wife. Having that solo space for myself is just already built in self-care, like right there. If I did nothing else, it would be built in self-care. But while we were there, we had a great time. There were some of the rooms were over um, redone and um, we eat, we drink, we do yoga, we do a lot of relaxing. It's just really to focus on the tourism of LBI and to see like what the restaurant, because it is under Fearless, what they're doing with their foods. You know, the seafood, if you are a seafood person and you absolutely love fresh seafood, if you go to uh, Tucker's Tavern, you will get all of that. Tucker's Tavern is under Fearless Restaurants as well. It's about nine minutes away from Daddy O, which is where we stayed in LBI. And Daddy O, I believe, is under um, Fearless. Either way, it's just an amazing experience altogether to see a lot of influencers from different walks and different types of influencing or different bloggers or different content creators all in the same space. And I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate like seeing people that I don't get to see. And I like how Fearless also mixes up who is coming because it, then it gives you a different experience when you get to meet new people that you've never met and you also get to bond. So it was a great experience and I have really nothing bad to say about it. You know, you can't go wrong when you give somebody, you know, you allow them to have a room and you're letting them do all the things. I, I don't really be seeing the problem with it. I just know that I look forward to every year and there's so much to do. So if you want to know more about LBI, if you want to know more about Tucker's Tavern and you want to know more about Daddy O, which is the name of the hotel and restaurant, um, look in the link in my bio because it will have all of those things. Because again, it's always about a good time. We are now in the cusp of what's going to be our summer season and a lot of people get out and they're traveling with their families looking for different places and you know you should add lbi to the list i find it to be warm and welcoming and here is the thing even at this last two years even after like we've had dinner and we've had lunch we've done all the things and everybody goes home normally i don't actually go right away to go home so i explore a little bit more to see what's going on and i must tell you the most peaceful experience I have ever had on that on a beach period has to be at LBI because again it is literally tailor-made for you to relax it's there for you to get your you know to vibe out to really just you know get comfort and I really enjoyed it also it is Friday it is National Donut Day who doesn't love a good donut and here's the thing they have donuts for all things they have donuts that are gluten-free they have vegan made donuts there are so many different types of donuts, flavorings, 
There are people who are doing some dynamic things by putting donuts and milkshakes. I mean, there's just so many ways in which you can enjoy a donut. So if you like donuts, go ahead and get that. Then today is your day. It is National Donut. Have one. Enjoy one. Do all of the things where it comes to donuts because it's a sweet treat. It really is a sweet treat. It's something about this little round, basically cake, um, cake type donut that is just, it really just makes you feel good. Um, in addition to it being National Donut Day, I also want to just say that today is the day where Bad Boys Ride or Die comes out, which is the fourth installment in the series. I saw it earlier this week. When I tell you, this is what I'm trying to tell you. This has been an extremely heavy uh, media week. I saw Bad Boys Basically Ride or Die, which is the fourth installment. I must say this you know the movie was phenomenal the time you sit down into the time that you leave you're going to just see pure action so get prepared get ready it is funny it brings all these different elements together i'm not giving you not a piece not a piece of a spoiler but i do want to say that the gentleman that plays um will smith's son i mean my god my god today um his name is jacob Scipio. he is very much they they casted the perfect son for Will Smith because Will Smith, aka Mike Lowry, there's no way as smooth and as um, debonair as he is could have had any son that was kind of like raggedy. So ladies, gentlemen, and whoever, I'm telling you, this is a movie to see. Again, action from the time that you start into the time that you finish and brings in all the elements of different things that, you know, have questions from movies in the series in the past. It answers them, it brings it all together. So I highly give this an A plus, a nine out of 10. Reason why I don't give it a 10 out of 10 is just because I don't really like giving out 10 out of 10. But if I could, I would, if I did that type of thing. But I definitely would say it's a nine out of 10. Would I see it again, even though I did see it, you know, before it came out? And the answer is absolutely yes. That's how good it is. It's that good that I would go spend coin, regardless of the media invite that I got to see it. I would see it and spend my own money to go see it because it's actually that good. So you're not doing anything this weekend or if you are find some time to support the film you know the first weekend is always the best to try to get those good numbers up for them um martin lawrence is amazing uh will smith is amazing the movie is a th it's just a thrill i absolutely love it go see bad boys ride or die which again is the fourth installment and how do we get to the fourth and it still be that good i don't know but whoever it's just it's a great it's a great film go ahead and support that this weekend so this week I was on, you know, the internets and I heard Kevin on stage, um, wife Melissa, and she was talking about this concept of being too nice, being too nice because you don't want the perception of being mean. And so at the, sometimes it's at the expense of yourself. Now, here's the thing about this conversation that I really enjoyed. Um, in that same conversation of her explaining that her therapist was trying to like talk to her about this whole being nice concept. And then she decided to address someone who had, I think they made a comment about basically why is this, um, they're renewing her and her husband are renewing their vows. I think it's like their 20th. It doesn't matter what number it is, but they're renewing their vows. And, you know, she's been kind of like giving us content along the way, which she always says she was going to do for those who follow her. I don't follow her on my blog page cause I'm trying to keep that. Well, I got to get those numbers down. Um, of the followers so I don't follow there but I do follow my personal account and the reason why I say that is because uh, I, I really don't understand people so here is the thing she said if you were following her even if you just followed her today whatever the case may be that again she's going to be making content about this whole wedding process you know um, trying to get people to like hey this is the type of dress you should wear to the wedding this is the kind of vibe that I'm going for blah 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 and again nobody is ever forcing anyone any one person to you know to follow them to go by all the things so i never understood why people get upset about stuff it's almost like the philadelphia story of the woman who the mom who paid for like i think it was like twenty seven thousand dollars for her daughter's prom it's not my twenty seven thousand dollars now would i pay twenty seven thousand dollars for my daughter's prom i have two daughters and a son um the answer is no wouldn't even blink I, I that's not my thing but to each their own right so Melissa is planning this, her and her husband are doing their vow renewal that we don't need to know when it is. It has no bearings on when the year is, but I do believe it's their 20th. And in the midst of this, somebody made this comment about like, basically, why are you making such a big deal? So she goes on to explain why it is a big deal. Now, in full transparency, I do understand why she explained it, even though, again, she owes none of us an explanation. So after she gets done explaining to the fact that I believe it was her father and her father-in-law 
who could not be at the their first wedding when they got married and walked them walk her down the aisle her father couldn't walk down the aisle his father couldn't be there because both of them were in the armed forces now my father um has been is in the arm well he retired from the armed forces but every time i had a little girl for both of my daughters he ended up going to um afghanistan and, and iraq both times legitimately both times and the devastation of like okay i have these little girls i don't even know i know he met my oldest because that was my first he was dead he definitely met her but my second he he had met her he came to the hospital and then shortly after he was basically um deported not deported because he you know he's a part of the country but he had to go out of the country to serve the country and so I understood that very well. The part that intrigues me, the part that I really enjoyed about her video was the fact of her saying like, I'm gonna like hold your hand when I tell you this. Oh, she said, no, I'm not gonna hold your hand when I tell you this. And basically like whoever this person commented on her page is like, listen, mind your business, right? Basically in a nutshell. Here's why being a people pleaser is a huge detriment to your mental health. I am all for being like professional. I am all for keeping decorum. I am all for being nice, right? But I also feel like at the end of the day, it's not even about people taking advantage of you. I also feel like it's a part of me or even a part of you that literally aches when you allow people to kind of like walk all over you. While you're trying to make somebody happy, you want them to like the things that you're saying, you want them to like the things that you're doing because somewhere deep inside of you, you feel like you need that person or person's validation. It wears on you mentally. There's been plenty of times when there's been things that have happened and I'm like, I wish I should have spoke up for myself. I wish I would have said this instead of just kind of like going quiet. Um, this was a huge struggle for me when I became a mom because again, although, you know, I'm going to always be my parents' child because, the, I, you know, I came from them or whatever the case may be. I'm not a child. So I feel like, and the reason why I brought my parents up into this, not because I'm like, okay, so now I get to disrespect my parents. No, that's not even the case. What I mean by that is sometimes people will treat you as if you're like childlike or they're not used to your grownness. That's that, that was like the first thing I had to get used to when I became a parent because if you've ever had a child, you know that the second you become pregnant, all of a sudden everybody becomes a web MD. All of a sudden they have written the what not to, uh, ex what to expect when you're expecting book. Everybody has something to weigh in on about what you should, should not do, what you can and cannot do. And God forbid, if you tend to listen to your doctor more then you listen to like a family member, it's all of a sudden your baby gonna be messed up and you don't wanna hear nobody and all, it becomes a mess. So I, I my first time really stepping fully into my grownness, even though I was there for a little while, I didn't have my, I had my first daughter when I was 28 years old, but I really felt like beat my chest, I'm grown when I had my daughter because now I'm responsible for somebody else's life and what you cannot do is you can't just walk all over me and play with me about my life while I'm also trying to manage the life of this child it's something about that now do you have to have a child to walk into your grownness absolutely not I already could have walked into my grownness because at 28 years old um, I had an apartment and my parents you know my dad was back and forth in Afghanistan and doing his thing and so I went back to my parents house of whom they were not living there they were in their own apartment or townhouse um I also had a car I had my education I had all these different things but it's just something about people pleasing that messes with the men your mental health you not only get upset about the things you could have said the stuff that you wanted to say you replay conversations over and over you replay the situations over and over again because again people pleasing is exhausting I, I don't know if you've ever been in a people pleasing era but if you have it is absolutely exhausting and if you're not careful you can't even remember who you're you know what levels you're supposed to be at with certain people I'll give you an example when I went to college um, you know, my parents was just like this whole, like we pay for your, you know, we, we're sending you to school. We're sending you to school. Now I understood now as I'm a little more mature, the fact that, you know, they're making sure that, you know, in a sense that, okay, you're going to school and we're taking you up there. But it took me 
I think even after I got to college to kind of like really weigh out the situation. Now, this is to no disrespect to my parents who listen advocately, you know, at, you know, they listen pretty much every episode, right? So this is not a disrespect to them, but here's where you have to weigh out when you're dealing with people, even if it's your parents, you can respectfully decline some of the things that parents can sometimes say. For instance, the, my parents telling me, oh, we, we put you through school, you know, we're sending you to school, it wasn't actually true. Now, not to say that they weren't, you know, supportive, but it wasn't true. I got a full scholarship to Penn State. That's where I went to school at. In addition, I bought almost 95% of the things that I needed for school. And I paid for most of my senior year things, Okay. In addition, once I got to Penn State, I worked a job. They didn't send me money on a regular basis for stuff. Like, it just was not that type of situation. And when I bought my first car, I paid for that in cash. And I also paid for the insurance. For years, I, if they didn't like something that I was doing while I was on Penn State campus, I would lie about what I was doing. Oh, I'm not doing this. Oh, no, I'm not at that party. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing this. Here's the thing. Had I understood that I could still respect my parents 1000%, but also speak up for myself and advocate for myself, I really would not have felt the need to lie. But lying became a way of life for me at that time because one, I made that choice. It had nothing to do with them. But in addition to that, people pleasing wanting them to be like oh my daughter's doing great so she's up there doing so well in school and we're sending her up to school and again this mindset of they were sending me to school when it was absolutely not the case not in any form were they sending me to school okay that's not to come at them that's not to degrade them that's not to say that they you know like they ain't nothing because they didn't send me to school no i mean i worked hard so that i could go to school without having to have somebody send me to school and so when it came to books when it came to supplies, when it came to my computer, like all these things were either done by a scholarship myself or Jesus himself, because again, it's just what it was. But I learned to be a people, per people pleasing person. I never liked, not to say I never liked, but I never wanted to join the church that we were in when I was growing up, but I'm a child, so I couldn't say anything. And so you go through different years, you go through different things. Now I was a little uh, talk back kid. And what I mean by that, I never spoke back to my parents, but I also didn't always go with the flow. If there was a question that could be had, I'm going to ask that question. Even if that meant I got in trouble for asking it, because I just felt like some things just didn't make sense. But in my people pleasing era, oh, I'm not doing this. Oh, I'm not doing that because it's the desire for people to really see you for what they want you to be instead of who you are. I wasted so many of my Penn State years, so many of my Penn State years trying to reconcile what it is that I was trying to become, what it is that I felt like they wanted me to be, what it is that I wanted, that my church wanted me to be, and they did not reconcile. But yet I kept fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. Okay, I'm, on Sundays when I go back to visit my church, I'm going to be this and I'm going to do this and I'm just doing all these great things. And I was doing great things, but I could also do great things and still decide, hey, I'm going to go do and go to this party without feeling like I needed to lie. Because again, in my people pleasing error and the mental health that I went through, the turmoil that I put my own personal self through, it wasn't my parents' fault that I was in this people pleasing state because I hadn't learned how to speak up because I was never really taught like I could actually speak up for myself. I could actually advocate for anybody. And, and, and here's the thing, my parents taught me how to advocate for myself outside of them, but I didn't know how to speak to them to gently say, hey, I'm not being disrespectful by telling you that I'm gonna go and do these things that you're not going to agree with and what I need you to do is to be able to be a phone and listening ear when I call and something's wrong I should be able to speak with you instead of me feeling like in fear I can't come and tell you my heart my most worst things that ever that was going on in my life because I wanted you to still see me as this perfect child right I was a 4.0 straight A student since the second grade you know when you walk that line of this people pleasing thing now the grades were for me but also realizing the 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 accolades the 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 looks that my parents would give, like all those things weighed. And again, as I got older, I started to do the same thing in other areas of my life. You know, well, I want my friends to see me this way. I want the, whoever I was dating to see me a certain, certain way. Because even after, like my husband and I dated when we were in college and broke up. I dated people after him. 
and even with the people that I dated that wasn't him, there was so much this people, like again, this people pleasing thing. If I make my partner and my person happy, if I do the things that they're really, you know, really wanting to do, then we will go far. But we did not obviously, cause I'm not even with them. But in addition to that, we never went far because again, it never reconciled with who I was. And I love that Melissa was like, I'm not going to hold your hand when I tell you to respectfully, you can go to hell. Basically, that's what she was basically saying. Now, she might have said a little bit more diplomatic than me. I'm not as always as diplomatic as I might sound. But this people pleasing face is strenuous on your, it weighs on you like you're carrying something that you're carrying somebody else's load because it was never meant for you. Let me repeat that again. You are carrying someone else's load that was never meant for you. It wasn't meant for me to act as if I was a perfect child when I was not a perfect child. It wasn't meant for me to hide the fact that as a young lady going to college that I was going to do things that college was going to present. Is When your child goes to college, they are going to go and they're going to go and attend a party, right? The best thing you could do is equip them with the school the, the tools that they're going to need to keep themselves safe and to look out for themselves. Because again, you can go to parties and you may not make it out right, right? Be prepared for certain things like have your head on a swivel, be careful, don't drink, you know, drinks from other people. That's what I should have been preparing for instead of acting as if, oh no, not me. I'm just at church every Sunday. What child, please. I barely made it to church on Sundays because I was out late Saturday night or late Friday sometimes. But when you're in your people pleasing phase, you carry this weight that other people are like, well, you know, I want her to go to school. I don't want her to do all those things. And it's like, honestly, everybody has the things that they're supposed to go through. And granted, I'm not saying that kids, adults, young adults aren't, you're not supposed to tell them, Hey, I don't want you to do certain things because you know, that may not be good for you. Of course, you're going to have those conversations, but you got to realize that everybody's going to go their own direction. But for me, I just did this juggling of lying because again, me being authentically who I was, I had no idea who she was. I didn't know who Toy was at the time. When you go to college, a lot of this is education, right? You're going there to learn. You're going to get a good education as long as you go to class or you attend, you know, do your thing you're supposed to be doing because there's been plenty of people who went to Penn State for where I was at during the time that I was at that doesn't even have a degree to this day, okay? However a part of college isn't even about just the education. Like you get to really put your thought process into the world. You really get to learn about your voice and seeing how your voice can make a difference or it can hinder. You really get to see how your interpersonal relationships makes or breaks you. You know, um, you get to see the, the first time you may have had your heart broken because you put your all into somebody and they're really just trying to make you one of something. Like, I promise you that college is not just about the education. You get to go through the fire. Your relationship with people becomes a little bit more stronger because you're in tight, like close proximity to people. You see these people every day. You're in classes with them every day. You're out partying with them every weekend. You get to learn things good, bad, or indifferent. And in my people pleasing era, I can tell you of the many days I sat crying because I would get into these arguments with my parents who were two hours away about things that I was doing up here because they would catch me in the lie. You know, I would get caught in this lie and I would backpedal as to why and I would do all these different things instead of just saying, listen, I made a mistake or I just did something that, you know, I felt was good and it may not have been the best decision, but this is where I'm at. And then say, okay, you know what? I, I get it. You know, you didn't make the best decision, but I, let's talk about it. Let's find ways to keep you safe. Let's find ways for you to do certain things. That was not available to me at the time. Like my parents were so deep into the church and the church that I went through or went to and went through as well. They had so many different rules. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And the rebellion inside of me just literally took over. And some, and for some people in college, that's a real life thing. You know, they, they get their first, your first drop of like, yes, freedom, I'm going to run and take it. And I took it. And as I began after college, again, that people pleasing phase allowed me to get into predicaments of people that I probably wouldn't have gotten into if I could just be myself. Right. And then being in yourself, you get to learn when you really get to learn yourself and you know who you are. 
You're not afraid to take chances on yourself. You're not afraid to be bold about who you are. You're not afraid to own who you are, good, bad, or indifferent. One of the things that I learned through trial and error, through the things that I've gone through, good or bad, is that becoming grown has nothing to do with age, which my parents always taught me that. You can be 18 and not be grown. But as an 18-year-old, you all you hear is, I'm grown, I'm an 18-year-old, I'm an adult now, I'm an adult. And you're right, you are an adult by age. You're not an adult by maturity. But life is going to get you to the place where maturity will catch up with you at some point. And that's always a parent's prayer, that that maturity will catch up with them a little sooner so they can avoid some of the pitfalls. Avoiding a pitfall of going out in colleges and drinking things you shouldn't have been drinking and drinking underage and all these different things is 1000% true. But to act as if that wasn't going to happen and for me not being able to realize that I was changing. I was changing good, bad, or different. I was changing because change was necessary. The things that I learned about myself, even in college, still help me to this day. The relationships that I made and the relationships that I broke still live with me and they help me to this day. I have a 15 year old right now. Okay. I have a 15 year old right now. She is three years away from becoming the adult that she's going to be. And, and, and here's the thing. In three more years, she becomes an adult by number, not by how much she knows. And and life will teach her that. My greatest prayer is that I would be a soundboard that she can come and safely feel as if she can come and tell me the deepest and, and the worst things that she's done and know that I'm going to be a soft place to land for her. Okay, I need to be that soft place to land because let me tell you something. When you make a mistake out there, you go and you drink too much and they got to pump your stomach. You go and you get a DUI and you got to get arrested. Now, let me just be real clear. None of these two things I'm saying has ever happened to me. Let's be honest and clear. But what I'm saying is these are examples of things that are going to happen. And when these things happen, I want to be a safe place that she knows that first of all, no, I'm not going to uphold your wrong. Absolutely not. Hey. But sometimes when your child does something wrong and it's time for you to correct, sometimes correction can be the secondary and being there to listen to being there to hear out of love instead of frustration. Sometimes now granted, I ain't the best of frustration. Like I'm not the best parent when it comes to my patients. I still pray about it, but I still want to be a soft place to land right now in high school. We have had very much open conversations as she is finalizing her freshman year. And there are things about conversations that I've had to have with her that I didn't think I was going to have with her for a little while. And I've already had to have it with her. Okay. And you know what I did when she came to me and asked the questions, I said, whatever question you ask, I'm going to give you 100% the truth. So this means we're not sugarcoating conversations, right? I'm not sugarcoating because I don't want her to be in this, this pleasing people pleasing stage. One of the lessons that I've been teaching my kids, and I know they're not fully grasping it, but I'm going to still keep repeating to them. I tell them all the time, if you're looking to make me happy, even in your decision making, I want you to know you're not going to make me happy. Okay. You were never placed on this earth to make me happy. So that means that you're going to do things, you're going to say things, you're going to get into things that I am 100% not going to agree with you. But one thing that doesn't change is my love for you, even in the midst of that disagreement, right? You go to date somebody, I'm like, I don't know if that's for you. I'm not going to not be a safe place to land just because I don't agree with whom you're dating, right? The best thing I can do for you is keep that safe space right? Keep that safe space so that when things get rough, you should be able to trust that if you call me and I'm here, I will love you through it. Now, sometimes love means, Hey, when this is over, we may have to have that strong conversation about, Hey, this one's in the best use of your time. Right. But to be a soft place, because I know that so many kids go to school and they become what their parents want them to be. And they never get to be authentically who they really, really want to be. I personally don't want to pay for my kids to go to school on something that they don't want to do because for real, if you make them go and you say, we're doctors, we've always been doctors and you have a creative mind, what you could do is teach that child how to open up their creativity and learn how to mark and monetize it, right? Because monetizing anything, social media, none of that was available when I was coming up, right? None of it. And so now we have kids that are doing great things because they learned how to use the tools and the things that are already inside of them. Here is the thing with people pleasing skills. 
because this is a skill set that you pick up by one trying to be a chameleon bouncing around from from group to group from situation to situation trying to get everybody to like you right we all have this need to feel want that that feeling of want me love me tell me i'm good tell me i'm great but when you get too deep in this people pleasing phase you're the one who hurts I struggled for years at Penn State because I wanted to say, hey, mom and dad, I just want you to understand that I'm still your child. I'm still God's child. Like I didn't go away from these things. I'm just, I'm learning how to figure out where I should be. I'm learning to trust my instincts. I'm learning to find my instincts. I'm learning to say, okay, I can go to this party. I can have a good time. Or maybe I can just go and not drink, but maybe I want to do these things. Like these are growing pains. Okay, and when you become a a show enough adult, meaning you've gotten over the 18 year old, you in some your your numbers is going up higher, but your your maturity is lacking. When you get to that point where you're sick and tired of always having to do the yes person and being the yes person for other people and people pleasing skills is 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 getting on your nerves, even on your own nerves. You'll begin to change, but that change will not come easy. Because people are going to be so used to you saying yes that your no is going to be such a turnoff for them. And that's when you're going to really find out who is there for you and who is not. When I started to make changes, when my when my daughter was, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I just was like, you know what, this is crazy. I got to clean my life up. I just got to make sure things are right because I'm bringing life into this world, right? I want to make sure things are as right as I can get it. So I started secretly going to parenting classes. Nobody knew that I was going to parenting classes. It was just something that I just thought I needed to do, right? And as I'm taking these classes, I'm learning new things, and I'm hearing things that I probably wouldn't have heard as, as my own kid, grow, like as me being a child growing up. Like some kids do certain things that are situational, and some parents, you know, will be like, well, you ain't supposed to do that. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. They're in that phase. Like, don't forget their kids. They're in that phase. That is something that's supposed to happen. People pleasing will mess your mindset up. Do you even know what it feels like to live if you've never lived for yourself? Melissa said, I'm not going to hold your hand when I say that. And that resonated with me so much. Sometimes even in the midst of trying to utilize and then exercise your voice, you feel like you still have to soften the blow for other people. I'm going to encourage you to not do that. I'm not asking you to be nasty. I'm not asking you to yell at people. I'm not asking you to do those things. I'm just going to say, stop holding people's hands. How do you hold somebody's hand when you go to tell them something? You'll say things, well, I can't take you to the store. Somebody says, hey, can you take me to the store? And instead of just saying no and letting no be strong enough, you have to say, well, no, because I was going to do this. And what happens? They give you some sob story. They talk you into the fact that they really need you and they don't have anybody else there for them. And you give in every single time because you just want to be a yes person because your no isn't strong enough. The no muscles haven't been flexed. One thing I've learned about being show enough, show enough grown is the fact that when I say no, nothing else has to follow. Let me repeat that. When you are show enough grown, your no does not need an amen corner. It does not need a, I know that's right. It don't need none of that. No is strong enough on its own when you're grown. Do you want to go to the store? I don't. Can you take me to this place? I can't. Why? I said no. It's strong enough without any help. It is strong enough. And when you start to let go of people's hand and trying to say things to people so that it, you know, that you don't offend them, I just want to serve notice to you that Jesus was perfect in his own way and people still didn't like him. Okay? And We have to get to the point where we have to stop making people feel comfortable in what standards we're trying to set. This is why, again, we talk about this so often when people go no contact. Other people who hear about you going no contact will tell you, well, that's still your mama. That's still your daddy. Nobody ever says, I wonder what they did to lose you that you felt the need to walk away. Nobody ever says that. So I'm telling you now, When you say no to somebody and you don't follow up with the explanation as to why, people are going to show you who they are. But when they show you, 
like Maya Angelou said, I need you to believe them the first time, right? They show you that they were only using you for your resources because you could give them a ride because you always did for them. You always gave them money. You always gave, 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 and they've never been able to be in a position to give to you. And by giving to you, I don't mean giving you money for money. Give to you means when you needed them, they gave you the same intensity that you, they wanted from you. So listen to me, people pleasing people, your mental health cannot keep taking the blows that it takes to continue to allow people to walk all over you. You can't. It's not beneficial to you. And you don't have to be mean or nasty to tell people no, but no will do. It's strong enough. I know you want to be like, I really, you know, but I'm so sorry. I've been working with my girlfriend and I've been telling her like, listen, she'll say things like, oh, like for instance, we're, we're really close, right? She'll say things like, oh, can I have your bite of your food? Now I respect the fact that she asked cause like, I believe in that, but she'll be like, I'm so sorry. And I always got to remind her, why are you sorry? If I didn't want you to have it, I would have just said no. And the no would have been strong enough. It didn't need an explanation. It doesn't need, I'm sorry, I wish I could, but it's no. Hey, can you come to our, our, our kickback? No. Oh, why? I said no. Now, people are going to look at you and be like, well, you know, here she go. Like, listen, they're going to talk about you either way. They're going to talk about you when you show up because they're going to be like, I invited her, but I only invited her because um, she brought something. I thought she should have brought something else. Uh, there's a lot of reasons, excuse me, for reasons why people... Well, again, when you go to tell them no, we'll show you who they really are. I need you to practice saying no. Like, I need you to practice saying no. Like, I have gotten really comfortable of saying no. For instance, in this content creation world, you will get a thousand and one invitations. I'll get invitations and I'll get a follow up to the invitations and I'll get a, hey, did you, you know, did you get the invitation? And so one thing I am trying to work on is making sure that I just decline very politely right off the bat instead of just leaving it on red, right? Because, you know, I'm, sometimes God be working on me because I'm not ready, you know, fully there yet. Sometimes I'm really can be a little snapper turtle sometimes. But when you get to the point where you're like, no, I can't do that. Even in content creation, I can't go to every event that's happening. And I don't give a long dramatic reason as to why. Thank you for the invitation. I won't be able to attend. And that's it. Thank you for considering me. I will not be able to attend. Please keep me in mind for the future. Simple. Very simple. But when it comes to your family, when it comes to your friends, when it comes to all these different people who, again, are so in tuned to you saying yes every single time that when you finally tell them no, they are going to be upset. They're going to call you all kind of name. You too good. You can't. Oh, so you got a new car. You don't want me in it. I said no. Because really, I don't want you in it. But we're just going to say no because we don't need nothing else. People pleasing skills. You got to stop holding people's hands. Like Melissa said, you got to stop holding people's hands because the hold the hand holding is actually a crutch and it don't really affect them it affects you it affects you you know that no is strong enough but we're so conditioned to give an answer for every little thing sometimes you do have to give an answer you're at work you can't be like well no but even with that your boss comes and says hey can you do some overtime the answer is no if you don't need there's no reason for you to say yes if you know you can't do it you know you got to pick up your kids and anything that's going to stop me from doing the things that people are that are that are close to me and connected to me need this answer is no oh you need me to go to a a, a, a function you need me to go to an event but you sent me the invitation late and my kids have something that's going on and i can't make it it's just a no i'm sorry i'm not going to be able to make it Sorry, not going to be able to make it. Can't make it. No, not going to be able to, but send my, send my regards. Like you've got to get to the point where you don't, you have to understand again, people pleasing is such a hard routine. Once you start it, you'll find yourself doing it over and over and over and over again because again people pleasing the first time will surely not be enough you got to people please for all things you got to go back into the barrel of people pleasing to find more skill sets to be able to tell people yes when you know you meant no 
So we're not going to hold hands to people and let them know that they can respectfully keep it moving. We're not doing that. Oh, I need to pay my rent. So do I. I got to pay a mortgage. I'm sorry. I can't help you with yours. Because if I get take away from mine just to give to you in, in the spirit of the fact that we have to be uh, good stewards over our finances, then what? Because if you're borrowing from me and I got to then borrow from somebody else to give to the, I, no, I don't have it. I'm sorry. I can't help you. And not even I'm sorry. I don't have it. I'm sorry. And that, here I go saying it again. I don't have it. And the answer is no. Oh, well, wow. You know, I give it back to you on such and such day. I hear what you're saying, but my answer still stands. And when you start to say things like that, it'll back people off of you and it'll make them second guess if they're going to come back and ask again. People pleasing does mess with your mental health for sure. You're not going to make everybody happy. Just like with my kids, I keep telling them, you are going to do things that are going to be such a disappointment to me, but you are never the disappointment. So although I may say something to you about the action, I'm not going to say anything to you about who you are because I'm not here to tear you down. You are a human. You get it. You have your own thoughts and your own feelings. They may not even agree with things that I've instituted because they don't have, they have that choice as they get older. But people pleasing skills have got to stop. You've got to stop doing that because I promise you it's not giving what it's, that you think is giving. It's not. So with that being said, that is the end of this podcast episode. Remember, you cannot make everybody happy. You were never meant to make everybody happy. You got to find ways to be respectful to everybody and their choices. But anything that's going to make that person happy but takes away from your happiness, it may not be the best suggestion for you. You got to be able to say no and mean it. You got to be able to say no and let, it, let, this, let the hard chips fall where they may. This is not going to be easy to tell somebody no who's used to your yes. You know, even with my kids, you know, they'll ask me, hey, can you bring A, B, and C up to the school? I lost it. I've done that the first few times. When we get to the repetitiveness, I say, listen, you got to take that L. So that means you get written up for it, then so be it. If that means that you have to stay after school for something you didn't do, then so be it. But I can't keep bailing you out every single time. If I've had to put that into real life play. Now, does that mean that I'm not there for you, that I don't that I don't care about you? No. But if you're used to me always picking up the pieces, when do you learn to take responsibility for yourself? Right? And then in the midst of that, still be there to listen to them when they say, oh man, I'm so mad because I had to stay after school. Okay, well, what time can I pick you up? I can do that. I can pick you up from your detention that you de rightfully earned because you know your schedule better than me, right? That's how we, that's how you learn when you have your kids. But when it comes to people pleasing, people pleasing is not the will. It's not, it's not the will for you because I'm telling you, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get upset. It's going to be such a burnout and such a turmoil financially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all these areas are affected by people pleasing skills and you don't need those skills. Those are skills you don't need, right? Being, you know, cordial to people, um, being a listening ear, those things that we all should do. But when it comes to detriment to us, we have got to put it to the side and say, no, I hope that this week is such a blessing. Remember it is national donut day. I hope that when you go into your, your new week next week, that it's going to be everything and more like all the things that you had on your plate for this week that you didn't get to do. I pray that it gets jumped to the t top of the list for you next week. And that it just works, that it just happens for you, that it just does what it needs to do. I hope that you find one activity for yourself. I say this every time we have a podcast episode because you know how many times weekend comes and then we have nothing to show for it. That's not what I want for you. I want you to be able to say, listen, I had a good weekend. I rested where I needed to rest. I got some clarity where I needed to get some clarity. I was able to clean a couple of things. I went out with some friends. I went to brunch. Something that really will truly make you happy. Put a smile on your personal face. And with that, thank you for listening to Conversations with Toy. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.